Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us and the different ways you have ministered to us already. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your faithfulness. For the remaining few minutes that we have, we ask that you bless your word to our hearts and grant, O oh God, that the entrance of your word will bring both life and light. Let your name be glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Psalm 71. Psalm 71. Let's read from verse 14 and give us the New Living Translation. New Living Translation. Thank you, sir. But I will keep on hoping for your help. I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long, I will proclaim your saving power. Though I am not skilled with words, I will praise your mighty deeds, O sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone that you alone are just. O God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. Now that I am old and gray, do not abandon me. Oh God, let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. Your righteousness, oh God, Reaches to the highest heavens. You have done such wonderful things. Who can compare with you, O oh God? That's what you are singing. Who can compare with you, O oh God? Go on. You have allowed me to suffer much hardships. Much hardship. But you will restore me to life again and lift me up from the depths of the earth. You will restore me even to greater honor and comfort me once again. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. God is going to restore us. Amen. He's going to restore us. I want you to put your trust and confidence in the Lord. He will restore us. Amen. God is going to restore Nigeria. Amen. He's going to restore Nigeria. Amen. Let me tell you what the devil is doing. The devil is working in such a way just to bring us to points of discouragement and surrender. And there have been many brothers and sisters in the Lord who have come to this point in life and they are saying, there's nothing that can happen to Nigeria again. For Nigeria, just forget Nigeria. And some have given up prayer. They have surrendered. And they are saying nothing good will happen to Nigeria again. Please, let me beg of us. Let's not join people to be speaking like that. Don't join people to be speaking negative prophecies. Making negative declaration. God will restore us again. He will do things that will marvel us in the name of Jesus Christ. He will marvel us. You know, there is, um, is it Brother Panam who sang, he said, don't give up. It's not over. 
Uh, when you give up, then it's song together don't give up it's not over when you give up then it's over hold on to the love and try restoration again for me. There will be restoration for us in the name of Jesus. Don't give up. Don't follow the people to say it's finished, it's finished. God will yet visit us in the name of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah 32. I'm not preaching this morning because when I look at time, I know that we cannot preach this morning. I just want to encourage our hearts. Don't give up. Don't give up. Jeremiah 32. Go to verse 6. At that time, the Lord sent me a message. God will send you a message. He will send you a message. Give us the message rendition. Jeremiah said, God's message came to me like this. Go on. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Even though things are difficult, the economy is hard, things are tough, prepare yourself. Don't be caught unprepared. Prepare yourself. Hananiel, your uncle, Shalom's son, is on his way to see you. He is going to say, buy my field. In Anatos, you have the legal right to buy it. Go on. And sure enough, 
Just as God has said, sure enough, listen, when God speaks, it is sure enough. Except if he has not spoken. But once God has spoken, brothers and sisters, it is sure enough. All we need to do, brothers and sisters, let's prepare ourselves. Prepare yourself in whatever way God is going to enable you to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. And he says, sure enough, the word of God came to pass. My cousin, Anamel, came to me while I was in jail. Excuse me, is anybody in jail here? Anybody in prison here? Now, if you are not in prison and you are sure you are not in jail, your condition is better than Jeremiah's. Far better than Jeremiah's. How can somebody be in prison and God will be telling the person, prepare yourself because you will buy land? <laughs> Does it make sense? Somebody in jail, God came to him and said, prepare yourself. Just get ready. You will buy land. You will buy land. And he said, sure enough, the word of God came to pass. You are not in prison. And you are only talking about the hardship. And we are giving up. But this morning, God is saying to you and I, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. The word of God came to pass. And he said of him, please, buy this land. You have the right to buy it and to keep it in the family. Buy it. Take it over. That did it. I knew it was God's message. It was God's message. It was God's message. Go on. So I bought the field at Anathoth. Excuse me, from where did he buy the field? You are not answering. From jail. Prison. Jail. I paid him 17 shekels of silver. Go on. I followed all the proper procedures. Now I'm saying this to us this morning so that you will understand that when you want to buy land or property, whatever you want to buy, buy it properly. Christians are normally very, I don't, know, I don't want to use the word careless, but the word is actually careless. You understand? Careless. You want to buy a land from a brother or a sister? You say, well, we are brothers now, no problem. And you just give the money, no papers, nothing. You say, no problem. <laughs> God bless you, bro. God bless you. Carelessness. Jeremiah was not that careless. He was buying even the land from a family member. They processed the papers. They follow the proper procedures in the presence of witnesses. So don't say, ah, why are you calling witnesses? Is it that you don't trust me as a brother? There's nothing like that. You are transacting business, transact it completely. Don't say, well, as a brother, it's okay. I know you will not cheat me. I know there's no problem over the land. There's nothing like that. Follow it to the latter. He followed it to the latter. Process the papers. In the presence of witnesses, I wrote out the bill of sale, sealed it, and weighed it out. The money on the scales. Go on. Then I took the deed of purchase and sealed the copy that contained the contract and its conditions and also the open copy. Sealed it. Took open copy, go on, and gave them to Baruch, son of Neriah, the son of Maseah. All this took place in the presence of my cousin Hanamel and the witnesses who had signed the deed 
as the Jews who were at the jail that day looked on. Then in front of all of them, I told Baruch, these are the others from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel. Take these documents, both the sealed and the open deeds, and put them for safekeeping in a pottery jar. Those days you don't have bank, you don't have anywhere to save it. He said, go and put it safe. Keep it. There are some of you sitting here, students particularly. You just graduated two years ago from secondary school. Your certificate has chopped. You didn't keep it safe. Some palm oil poured on it. If you bring your certificate now, two years, it's as if you collected it 70 years ago. That's carelessness. You keep documents very well. Keep documents very well. Keep documents very well. Save, sound. Whether it's certificate, property for vehicle, car, or land, whatever property, keep them very well. That is why usually the vice, I mean the assistant general secretary will be making announcement concerning church inventories. And they say submit church inventories. When they say submit church inventories, units are careless because we are brethren. They say what is there. So if they ask you where are the receipts for these documents you purchased, you have thrown them away. Because we are in church. So we think that because you are a Christian, you should be a careless person. They say bring inventory. You cannot bring inventory. It will take you many years to bring inventory. As units, you don't know the inventories of your units. If they say bring account of the inventories, you can't bring them. It is not proper to be so as Christians. Not proper. But God's word came to Jeremiah in prison. God said to him, you are going to buy a land. Prepare yourself. How can a man in prison buy land? As you look at yourself, you are saying, how can in this hardship, how can I buy land? In this hardship, how can I buy car? Excuse me. In this hardship, are people buying land? In this hardship, are people building? In this hardship, are people buying vehicles? Touch your mouth. Touch your mouth like this. That mouth that you are touching by, I pray it will not undo you. It's with our mouth that we undo ourselves. Say, this is not possible. How can I buy car in this economy? People are buying cars. People are buying cars. When he said prepare yourself, he's saying arrange, arrange, prepare. Because this time, as people are going to be selling their cars, some people say, I can't buy fuel. It's better I enter Keke, buy the car. Buy the car. And bring it, we'll dedicate it here, buy it. Do you understand? Because God is going to restore this system. He's going to restore it. He's going to restore it. If people are selling, buy it. But take the proper documentation, the proper papers, everything. Get them set. Get them set. God will do something in this country. He will do something that will shock all of us. For long. I just keep asking myself, how did we get here as a country? How did we get to this level? How did we get people in government that are stealing billions of naira? Billions. Billions. Billions of dollars. Do you know why the price of dollars have gone up now? How much is a dollar today? Eh? You say what? You are not talking. 180. You say what? 1,800. 1,800. 
Do you know why dollar is like that? I'm asking you. It's because of Nigerians. Nigerians were the ones that made dollars to go like that. And Naira has become valueless like that. Why? Several government officials are keeping dollars. What they are looking for is dollars. Even all the billions that they are stealing in Naira, they are converting them to dollars. And once you pursue dollar, the value of dollar will go up, your own currency will go down. It's a basic law of economics. There's nothing special about it. The other sets of people that are supporting them are bank managers and officials. They are helping them, helping them, helping them to do all of those. So you have a child in US or UK, you will not have access to dollars because all these people have changed all the money they have stolen into dollars and stashed them away. God is going to bring a change. Some transformation will come that will shock us and you will know that it is God that has spoken. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't surrender. Don't surrender. Don't surrender. The word of God came to pass. Go to verse 36. Let's pray. But there is also this message from me, the God of Israel, to this city of which you have said, in killing and starvation and, no, no, give us, and starvation and disease, this city will be delivered up to the king of Babylon. Go on. Watch for this. I will collect them from all the countries to which I have driven them in my anger and rage and indignation. Yes, I will bring them all back to the place and let them live here in peace. Give us this verse in NLT. I will certainly bring my people back again from all the countries where I have scattered them in my fury. I will bring them back to this very city and let them live in peace and safety. Peace and safety will return to us. I will certainly bring my people back again. No, go to the next verse. They will be my people and I will be their God. Even those who have left, who gave up and say nothing good can happen to Nigeria again. They will come back. They will come back. When God does his restoration, bringing Nigeria to the point where it should be again, there will be a bringing back. God himself is one say, I will bring them back. 39. And I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of all their descendants. Go on. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. I will put a desire in their hearts to worship me and they will never leave me. I will find joy doing good for them and will faithfully and wholeheartedly replant them in this land. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord says. Just as I have brought all these calamities on them, so I will do all the good I have promised them. Amen. All the good God has promised us will come to us. God is going to visit Nigeria in a special way. In the name of Jesus. Don't give up. As you leave this morning, don't give up. Let's pray. Don't give up. Chairman. It's not. Even when you fail, 
It's not over. One more time. Don't give up. It's not over. When you give up, then it's over. All on to the Lord, and trouble not all, even when you fail. It's not. Dear Father, we thank you for the message of hope. You're stirring up our hearts that it is well with the righteous. It is well with our country, Nigeria, that you are visiting us again. And our brothers and sister in, sisters in diaspora will be returned back to our land in the name of Jesus. As a country, we will make progress, and we make this covenant this morning that we will serve you, we will worship you, because you are the one putting your desire in our hearts, your seed right deep inside us, that will not depart from serving you and looking up unto you, we will not depart after other gods, the gods of the nations, we will not turn our hearts to idols, we will not turn our hearts to money. We will not turn our hearts to silver and gold. We will not turn our hearts after the gods that the people pursue in our generation. This morning, Lord, we set our hearts that we will look up unto you and serve you continually. Irrespective of our situations and our present circumstance, we declare that God is visiting Nigeria. We declare that God, you are visiting our banks. We declare that you are visiting our economy. We declare you visiting our leadership, our nation, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That you are visiting the criminality in our nation, Nigeria. Criminality will not rule over the nation, Nigeria. We declare that there is an end to criminality in the name of Jesus Christ. Righteousness exalts a nation. The seed of righteousness will exalt our nation, Nigeria. From the boundary in the north to the boundary in the south. The boundary in the east to the boundary in the west. Nigeria shall be restored in the name of Jesus. Our seeds, our descendants, our children, our parents, our, the ancients in our land will yet worship you and bow down to you. Because of your goodness and because of your visitation upon our land. Thank you for driving out the enemy. Because it was not their sword that gave them the land. It was not their strength that gave them the land. It was your favor. It was your countenance. It was you, O oh Lord, that went before them. Jordan saw it and gave way. Hallelujah! Let Jordan in Nigeria see your presence. Reveal yourself to the giants in the land. Visit the giants by day and by night. By dream and by vision. And by the diverse operations of your spirit in the name of Jesus. There is no limitation to what you can do in order to confirm your words to your servants. You gave the prophetic word many years back that Nigeria will be known for corruption. Nations, hallelujah, will run away. The name Nigeria will stink, but a turn for righteousness will come. That other nations will even look up to Nigeria and say, let's go and visit Nigeria and see what God is doing in Nigeria. Exalt this nation for your name's sake. Let righteousness rejoice in Nigeria. Let truth and equity enter into our courts. Let truth and justice be found in our streets. Let the oppressed be set free, O oh God. O oh Lord, our God, we call upon your name and we know you will not abandon us. We will yet rejoice in your salvation. Thank you for your, the hope that we have, the hope of glory. Do unto us according to your good word. Do unto us according to the proclamation of your word. It is well with your people. Blessed be your name forever. Thank you for your son. You will refresh him and strengthen him also. That Lord, as your people look up unto you, we will see your visitation upon lives, individuals, families, 
and the church. We will see your visitation in our community, University of Joss. As we make progress in the second semester, Lord, help us as an institution. Grant help to our principal officers. Grant help to our deans and our directors. Grant help to our senators. Grant help to our lecturers. And grant help also to our students. Grant help to staff in this institution. We will see your salvation. Our deep yearning and crying I desire is to see the living God in action in our nation and to see you being worshipped by all. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.